Back in 2003, if you wanted to read a magazine, you couldn't just pull it up on your iPad. If you wanted a pizza, you had to pull out the yellow pages, unless you had the number on your palm trio. Tab was still banned from the United States, which probably wasn't such a bad thing. And the web? I mean, just look at it. Look at it! Obviously, streaming video wasn't a thing yet, and so we relied on DVDs. When you really think about it, DVDs were an amazingly important technology. They were the first digital medium that movie studios accepted, albeit reluctantly, and a company called Flexplay thought that they could capitalize on the success of DVDs. Now, Blockbuster and Netflix's mail-in DVD services were bringing in billions. Remember Blockbuster? <laughs> but, but those services required days to wait, or in Blockbuster's case, I suppose, there was the need to drive back to the store to drop the disc off before you were charged for two nights. I mean, after all, who didn't want to spend more time at watching, say, the Backstreet Boys World Tour? Now, the idea behind Flexplay was invented by two university professors in 1999, though it didn't become a reality until 2003. Unfortunately, due to negative response by consumers, it never really flourished. So what did this technology do anyways? Flexplay was marketed as the self-destructing disc or the 48-hour no-return DVD. And I'm sorry, but I can't help but mock that horrible logo. <laughs> now, one important difference between Flexplay and competing products, like Circuit City's DivX, which was a massive failure, by the way, is that Flexplay could work in any DVD player, which was a huge plus. Now, how did I get one that's still sealed? That's actually a good question. I scoured the internet for weeks and I bought the last one on the whole internet, period. I'm serious, there's none left. And I challenge you to find one. But even if you do, you shouldn't buy one because it won't work. The unopened Flexplay disc only stayed fresh in the package for about one year. And this was a huge downside to the medium. It was hard to know how many discs to manufacture and retailers weren't willing to cycle DVDs like produce. My 2004 copy is already nearly a decade expired. Now opening the pouch set off the clock, a bright red disc not like mine, which is rather dark, would indicate that the DVD was fresh and ready to roll. Since retail chains like Blockbuster had so much power, they made it really hard for Flexplay to even enter the market because they didn't want grocery stores and pharmacies and other places renting the newest releases. So Flexplay discs were released anywhere from two months to two years after the initial DVD release. Ouch. Since this thing functioned like a regular DVD and didn't have proprietary DRM, that meant that it could be ripped by handbrake, and as you can imagine, movie studios were less than pleased with that. Now, if you've ever looked at a DVD, you can see that there's a seam between the inner and the lower layer, which is adhered by a polymer resin. Now, Flexplay chemically modified this method to oxidize when exposed to air. This creates an opaque layer which is impenetrable by a DVD laser. It's actually really brilliant engineering, and I find it fascinating. Now, if you're like me, you're probably asking, well, how does the oxygen enter that middle layer? The, the fact of the matter is I don't know, but I would suspect that it enters through this gap between the two disc halves, which are not usually present on a DVD. They're left open. So Flexplay was screwed because of Blockbuster, but also because of environmentalists. And I find this ironic because fast food chains were including DVDs in their kids' menus like nobody's business. Yet Flexplay got slammed because, well, they were being wasteful. It's ridiculous. Lastly, these things costed five to seven bucks a pop, which was just the nail in the coffin for this tiny little Flexplay company that is now eternally expired. I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like, leave a comment down below, follow me on Snapchat, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.